Hello friends, in previous video we have seen the design procedure for turnbuckle. Now in this video we are going to see the numerical on turnbuckle as you are seeing the heading on this uh, slide. So let's start without wasting time. Please see guys. What problem tells us? The pull in the tie rod of an iron roof truss is 50 kN. What it is written? The pull in the tie rod of an iron roof truss is 50 kN. So design a suitable adjustable screw joint the permissible stresses are 75 newton per mm square in tension 37.5 newton per mm square in shear and 90 newton per mm square in crushing see guys all the permissible stresses are given over here in this numerical i am again reading this numerical the pool in the tire rod of an iron roof truss is what 50 kN. the design load is given to us 50 Design a suitable adjustable screw joint. See, see guys, in this numerical or in this problem, they have not asked us to design a turnbuckle. Actually, they are asking for a design a turnbuckle, but they have not mentioned any name of turnbuckle. So this this we need to identify. While identifying a problem of turnbuckle, you need to identify that what they have written over here. They have written design a suitable adjustable screw joint. What? suitable adjustable screw joint and we and you should know that suitable screw joint means screw joint means nothing but your turnbuckle so they have don't give a name of turnbuckle over there instead of asking turnbuckle they have asked suitable adjustable screw joint so this we need to understand you need to identify you have to identify okay that turnbuckle is designed to ask after that the permissible stresses are 75 newton per mm square in tension that is sigma t is 75 newton per mm square 37.5 newton per mm square in shear that is tau is equals to 37.5 newton per mm square is given and 90 newton per mm square in crushing it means sigma c is given so this is the numerical now we are starting solution for this numerical please pay your special attention over here because if you once understood one problem then you can solve number of problems on the basis of this okay so as previous video of uh, knuckle joint numerical when i have uh, taught you about the knuckle joint how to solve the knuckle joint numericals at that time i have told you what is the first step of solving any uh, problem regarding design subject the first step, the first step of sol solving the problem is writing the what given data okay or whatever the data which is given to us in this numerical that you we need to write it down first after that we are proceeding for the calculations okay so what is the first step the first step is to write the data which is given to us so give heading here just i have written follow same sequence given data now p p is equals to load carried by the rods which is given 50 kilo 50 kilo newton so i have written there but we need to use the value for uh, calculation in newton so we have to convert it into newton that is 50 to 10 is to 3 it means newton so design load as we know in design procedure so design load is we need to consider 1.3 times of load carried by the rods okay so that is why we have written here p is equals to design load and which is equals to or which is given or which is have to taken by us 1.3 times of load carried by the rods that is why for satisfy, satisfying this condition i have written over here p is equals to 1.3 into 50 into 10 raise to 3 is equals to 65 into 10 raise to 3 newton so value for p is 65 point 65 into 10 to 3 newton so we have to use this 65 into 10 to 3 newton in the rest of the numerical okay we are not going to use or we are not going to uh, take that value 15 to 10 to 3 don't get confused over here we need to take design load p is equals to 1.3 times of load carried by the rods so after multiplying 15 to 10 to 3 by 1.3 we got this value 65 into 10 to 3 and this value of design load p that is 65 into 10 to 3 newton that we need to use in rest of the calculations okay so the here is tau tau is, is equals to permissible shear stresses that is 35 37.5 newton per mm square sigma t is equals to permissible tensile stress which is 75 newton per mm square sigma c is equals to permissible crushing stress is equals to 90 newton per mm square so all these are the uh, permissible stresses value tau sigma t and sigma c which is given in this numerical so we have written all the data which is given to us it means we have clear first step of solving the design problem now what next please see 
Now let me revise you. This is the step number one of designing the uh, turn buckle. That is failure of rod in tension that we have seen in so, uh, design procedure in previous video. So see, the rod may fail due to tension. Uh, sorry, due to tensile load P. So we know that the area resisting tearing follow the same design procedure over here. Just whatever I have written in, whatever I have uh, may, uh, take the sequence or whatever I have, uh, uh, you know, acquire the sequence or whatever I have written the formulas, all that we need, need to follow so that we can easily find out the values regarding this turn model. Now we know that area resisting tearing is equals to pi by 4 into dc square. This formula we have already seen in uh, design procedure. Okay. This is tearing. Now tearing strength of rods is equals to p is equals to pi by 4 into dc square into sigma t. We need to equate this with p and sigma t. Okay. So by this relation we can easily find out the value of dc. See guys. So dc square is equals to p into 4 divided by pi into sigma t which is after that I have just put all the values. P is given 65 into 10 to 3 into 4 divided by pi into C. What is the value for sigma t? Sigma t is given 75. So by this we can easily find out the value of dc square which is 1103.47 mm. So this is the value for dc square not dc. Let me tell you this value 1103.47 mm this value is for dc square not for dc. After taking this value into under root in your scientific calculator okay after taking this value into square root under square root in your scientific calculator you found dc is equals to 33.21 mm okay so what will be the value for dc 33.21 now see guys 33.21 it means we need to take it 34 okay near about 34 so this is the step number one that we have calculated the value for dc Okay, now see after I have told you in previous video after finding out this DC or if you see the design procedure of turn buckle after finding out this value of DC we need to find the, uh, the nominal diameter DO and value for pitch P. So how that value we are going to find that value we are going to find by standard table. Now what are that standard table is that we are going to see. Please see. Now see here I have written from standard table value of nominal diameter do and pitch can be determined i have already told you and this i have already told you uh, when i have taught you the design procedure of turn buckle after finding out the value of dc we need to find out the value for this do that is nominal diameter and pitch okay so here i have written do is equals to 39 mm and pitch is equals to 4 mm therefore dc is equals to 34.093 mm now the question uh, arise in your mind that uh, sir doesn't have uh, you know uh, show us that how uh, they have calculated this 39 and pitch 4 and this 34 okay how the that values are uh, come here automatically so don't worry about that guys let us see how these values are coming okay so what we have calculated dc first let me tell you we have calculated the value for dc is 33.23.21 mm now this 33.21 that we have to consider it round figure that is about 34 mm okay now please see this here in this table i have mentioned this do this is the column for do that is nominal diameter and this dc this these are the uh, these are the dimensions for dc coupler nut okay you need you need not uh, a coupler bolt okay this is so we need to follow this column okay 5 and 6 so we need to uh, find, uh, refer the this column number 5 we need to refer this column number 5 and we need to refer this do column number so this is dc that is column number 5 and this is column number 3 now how we can find out so what we calculate we calculate the value of, value of dc is 33 point something so here in in this dc column number 5 you can see the, there is three dimension uh, three diameters are given that is 31.093 34.093 and 36.416 so we calc our calc actual calculated value is 33 point something so 33.21 something so here it is not given well 33 value is not given over here okay if you see here value value is given 31 and 34 so we have considered 33.21 to rounded uh, value that is round figure value that is 34 now we got this 34 you know? we have calculated dc actually 33 point something so we have rounded it to round figure so what we got 34 mm okay we consider 34 so for this 34.093 mm 
your do is 13 nm see guys if you see this row 34.093 mm for uh, dc if you see values in these rows so you can left with 39.00 okay so so if your dc is 34 then value for do is 13 nm if your dc is 34 mm then for 34 mm core diameter the value of nominal diameter that is do is 39 mm and similarly pitch you can see this is the column for pitch see this is column for pitch so if do is 39 so pitch is 4 okay pitch is 4 and for that for that pitch 4 for that do 39 mm your dc will be what 34.093 that is why i have written all this value here do 39 mm pitch 4 mm therefore dc 34.093 mm i think you have cleared now now next now this is step number two that how we have calculated the other dimensions please see considering the shear failure of threads at their roots i just follow the design procedure i don't uh, you know done anything new okay i am just following the design procedure automatically you will easily solve the problem see area resisting shear is equals to pi into dc into l now considering the shear failure tau is equals to p divided by pi into dc into l so we have value of tau that is 37.5 is equals to 65 into 10 to 3 your value of p pi into dc value we have considered earlier 34.093 into l so by this relation we can easily find out the value of length l that is length of coupler nut okay this length of coupler nut is equal to 16.18 mm but in actual practice see what here i have written but in actual practice length of coupler nut can be taken in the range of do to 1.25 times du for steel see do to 1.25 2.5 oh, sorry 1.25 times do for steel that we have this we have already seen in design procedure length of coupler nut can be taken in the range of do to 1.25 times do for steel so uh, all the viewers i request to all the viewers before see before seeing this numerical video please see my design procedures video if you see the design procedures video then you can easily get uh, you can uh, easily you know understand this numerical uh, more easily okay so what i have done here length l is equals to 1.25 times do so 1.25 into do is 39 so length of coupler nut will be 48.75 next this is step number three please see checking the crushing stress induced in threads see guys checking the crushing stress induced in threads now we need to check the crushing stress see area resisting crushing of fork end now what it is pi by 4 into do square minus dc square into n into l now crushing stress uh, now crushing strength p is equals to pi by 4 into do square minus dc square into n into l into sigma c and we know that your induced crushing stress should be less than your permissible crushing stress okay so where n is equals to number of threads per mm of length and formula for n is 1 divided by pitch and we know that pitch is 4 mm so 1 by 4 is equals to 0 0.25 so i have just put all this value over here sigma c is equals to p divided by we need to find out this sigma c that where this induced sigma c uh, more or less than your permissible sigma c that is crushing stress that is why sigma c is equals to p divided by pi by 4 into do square minus dc square into n into l sigma c is equals to all value we, values we have so just put the value in the numerical formula 65 to 10 to 3 this is not 103 all the viewers are request please see don't get confused over here this is not 103 this is 10 raised to power 3 okay 65 this value of p we know that value of p 65 to 10 raised to 3 this is 65 to 10 raised to 3 divided by 5 by 4 into 39 square minus 34.09 square that is do square minus dc square and n value of n just we have just calculated that is 0 0.25 into 48.75 is equals to what 18.05 newton per mm square and which is less than 90 newton per mm square and 90 is the allowable or permissible crushing stress value which is given in the numerical okay it means this uh, our induced crushing stress so what we this is induced crushing stress sigma c so our induced crushing stress value we got 18.05 newton per mm square and this 90 is the permissible or allowable crushing stress okay so value of allowable crushing stress is 90 newton per mm square and induced of 
uh, 18.05 newton per m square according to the condition given for safe design our induced crushing stress value should be less than your uh, permissible crushing stress value so we have satisfied that condition it means our design is safe i have mentioned over here you need you also write in your whenever you solve uh, turn buckle problems write this statement over there please see as the induced crushing stress is equal to 18.05 newton per m square is less than the permissible crushing stress that is 90 newton per m square is it means design is safe okay now step number 4 step number 4 is considering the tensile failure of coupler nut please see considering the tensile failure of coupler nut now consider the diameter d of coupler nut is found by considering tensile failure that is why i have written over here sigma t is equals to p divided by pi by 4 into d square minus d o square so i have just put all this value in this numerical formula that is 75 is equals to 65 into 10 raised to 3 this is not 103 i again uh, tells you this is 10 raised to power 3 okay sixth value of p just keep in your mind that value of p that is 65 into 10 raised to 3 so it is uh, there is no question arise to get confused okay 65 into 10 raised to 3 divided by pi by 4 into capital d square minus d o square that is 39 square so value of d i have determined that is 70.62 mm it means it is nearly 71 mm so i have rounded it to 72 mm say okay what it is uh, next in this step number 5 so step number 5 is considering the tensile failure of coupler please see what it is written over here this inside diameter of coupler is equal to d1 is equal to do plus 628 mm that we have seen in design procedure always so d1 is equal to i have to take it 39 is the value for do plus 6 that is 45 mm so value for d1 that is value for inside diameter of coupler d1 is equal to 45 mm okay now outside diameter that is d2 of coupler is found out by considering the tensile failure of coupler that we have seen in design procedure so we can easily find out the value of outside diameter that is d2 of coupler by considering the tensile failure of coupler so we have written over here the formula that is sigma t is equals to p divided by pi by 4 into d2 square minus d1 square so let me again tell you guys this is not d12 okay this is d1 square this is some typing mistake from my side so don't get confused over here so this is d1 and this is 2 for square so d1 square d2 square minus d1 square so i have just put this all value that i have in this formula and see what we have left with that is 75 sigma t is equals to p is value of p that is design load is 65 to 10 raised to 3 so again 10 this is uh, look like 103 but this is not 103 this is 10 and this is 10 raised to power 3 okay so 65 to 10 raised to 3 divided by pi by 4 into d2 square minus 45 square so d2 so value of d2 is equals to 55.93 mm see guys value of d2 is equals to 55.93 mm so i have just rounded it and take taken the value 56 mm okay so d2 value of d2 is 56 mm so Uh, i want to tell you when i have taught the design procedure of turn buckle so i have mentioned that uh, in actual practice we need to uh, change some dimensions or we need to check uh, take the some dimensions of uh, this coupler nut or uh, turn buckle according to standard empirical relations so see outside diameter of coupler is taken in the range that of 1.5 times do to 1.7 times do so d2 is equals to 1.7 into do d2 is equals to what 1.7 into do so 1.7 into value of do is 39 that is 66.3 mm and length of coupler is equals to 6 times do that is 6 into 39 that is 234 mm and thickness of coupler is equals to t is equals to 0.75 times do is equals to 0.75 into 39 that is 29.25 mm so in this way we have successfully designed the uh, done buckle and i think this content is helpful for you for solving the numerical and for understanding the concept of done buckle thank you guys